Thanks for staying with us right here on uh, Sunrise as uh, we continue this morning. Well, this time around, I'm standing in the medical signs uh, of COSA. And uh, we're talking anatomy, genetics, physiology, and health care. As you can see, the bright sparks are right behind me uh, here at the Expo. Uh, of course, it's the ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists. But uh, joining me now for a conversation is Peter Pretorius, who is uh, the chairman of the board uh, for the Expo. Uh, and he is with the ex ESCOM. Thanks very much for joining us, uh, Peter. Um, great work into this initiative. It is 37 years old. You've been involved with it for, for about 18 years or so. Yeah. Um, why do you personally think this is so important for you to be part of it? I think it's important because from these learners, is our future, our future depends on this. So they're the ones that are going to do the innovation and the research and so on to help the country grow. So that's why we are involved with it and why I'm involved in it. Now, obviously, this uh, looks in, in, the, in the STEM field, in, in the education department, encourages uh, you know young people to excel, excel in these different fields. But at the same time, it also tries to speak to the socio-economic challenges that we're facing as a country. Do you think we have answers to our challenges from this group? I think from every group we do, because the innovation creates jobs. So uh, a person who finds a solution to a problem starts a business. And that's why Eskom's own research and innovation team is also involved in this and helping learners to develop their projects further and then to eventually commercialize it and they, thereby creating jobs. As part of um, Eskom uh, strategy and um, the investment that the, the company uh, puts into, into it, uh, how, how big a role uh, and what sort of like, you know, monies do you guys put behind this project? Eskom puts a substantial amount of money uh, in this, and so does many of the other sponsors. Our second the biggest sponsor is Siemens. Um, but we believe that the money should rather go to the learners than to administration and people and, and, and offices and so on. So, um, like for instance, tonight at the special awards evening, it's all about bursaries to, to the learners. The universities are part of that, um, private businesses part of that, offering bursaries for, for, for the learners to study further. So. But Eskom is by far our biggest supporter um, financially and keeps us afloat and have been keeping us afloat for the last 17, 18 years. Now, in terms of uh, the country with uh, the National Development Plan, you know, Vision 2030, it talks about the impact of science um, in, in, in turning things around for us uh, as a country. This is probably one of the biggest tiers, you know, education, young people, innovation, technology and science, sciences uh, in school. The Expo brings universities, the private sector, um, government, you know, you, you work with the Department of Education as well as uh, science and technology. How do you closely make sure that the, that the dots connect uh, within those uh, three spheres? Well, we firstly, we are endorsed, as you said, by the Department of Basic Education, Department of Science and Technology, and also the Department of Public Enterprises, because ESCOM reports to the Department of Public Enterprises. So there we already have a link to government, um, and basic education has ensured that this is um, part of the curriculum right through the country. Um, universities, um, you'll see some of the universities today uh, that are here that um, talk to the learners to, 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 to take up um, uh, studying in, in the science, technology, engineering and innovation areas. But they also offer bursaries um, and the bursaries then uh, helps the learners then to, to move into a career. Where the private sector comes in and where they can play a bigger role, and that is always my passion, is, is, is to show the learners, if I have a degree in mathematics, what does a, a career look like in mathematics or what does a career look like in, in, in natural sciences? And that is important because sometimes a learner will think, well, I've participated in this extracurriculum activity, but then I'm going to do something else. Mm -hmm. But actually, they would make an excellent scientist. So that's what we're trying with the private sector is to, 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 to encourage the learners to go and see what you can do and become. Now, I was talking uh, to Perticetti uh, uh, earlier on about um, striking a balance uh, between the urbanized kids and children who are in, in rural areas. Uh, you know, exposure obviously plays a bigger role, but socioeconomic challenges uh, cut across, and we all need these, these solutions. How are you making sure that those who are, you know, less advantaged um, get to participate fully in, in the expo? Eskom has made it very clear to us, um, and Eskom is one of the most transformed organizations um, in the country, and also with Eskom's procurement, um, we are one of the top 
or ESCOM is one of the top um, organizations in the country when it comes to procurement from black owned businesses, black women owned businesses and so on. So ESCOM has also put a target onto the ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists that we must maintain a 50-50 balance between male and female and we have to maintain 60% um, at the current uh, this year, 60% previously disadvantaged learners versus 40% uh, advantaged learners. So that balance has to be struck in all the regions mm. as well as at the International Science Fair where we are today. Now in terms of like um, the board of the, the, the Expo, I'm sure the people who sit across it come from different uh, backgrounds, yourself um, as, as the chairman. The sustainability of, of this Expo, I mean it's been going on for 37 years and it's been growing every year. What are some of the things and, and strategies that you, you put in to make sure that it, it grows every year? Well. One of the, we see that the growth needs to happen in the regions. Um, this is the epitome of, of the science fair, um, the international science fair. So um, we re try and reach, um, or we currently reach 100,000 learners across the country. Um, from that, they participate between 25 and 35,000 in the regional science fairs. And then what you see here today is 600 of the top learners in the country. Mm. So our, our, the main job that we do um, in Eskom Expo for Young Scientists is, is to try and reach those schools that are not easy to reach, to drive out there and to talk to them and to help them and to educate the teachers um, on, on, on Eskom Expo and to get them to participate. Mm. Um, and that is one of our, our key drivers in, 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 in going forward. So for us, we have a financial stability. Um, we've signed a recently another five-year contract with Eskom, but uh, our growth in the rural and deep rural areas is our focus for the next five years. Great stuff. So the, 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 they come to the Expo and those who obviously succeed, they get taken to, to, to other levels, but all the, the young people are exposed to opportunities to exchange ideas with their peers in South Africa. Um, um, and Mr. Pretty earlier on was talking about, um, you know, the continental connection and South Africa taking its place and contributing to the growth in the continent. But there's global exposure as well, you know, that comes through with the prizes. Just tell us about that. Well, firstly, um, the, the ESCOM Expo is, is, is really open to, to SADC at this point in time. So we don't believe, we believe that we can't be an island of prosperity. We need to talk to our neighbours. So we have um, Lesotho, Swaziland, Zimbabwe, um, Namibia, Botswana here um, and then from this group of learners that are here today some of them will be selected to represent South Africa at international science fairs and I must be honest that our success has been phenomenal. We're a small country on the southern tip of Africa and we participate at the international science fair where there's 63 countries, uh, almost 3,000 learners and we always walk away with prizes. So for the last 10 years we have won 50 international prizes which these learners that you see here today are the ones that represent us and they, 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 they are able to, to, to hold their own on an international level. So we don't have to stand back for them. A lot of times we see um, young people excel in, you know, in, in a high school and they come to this level and then they get to, to university. Obviously they meet other young people who are at a level as them or even, even greater. Um, and they, or they take another turn. Mm. But let's talk about the highlights of like, you know, those past t uh, 10 years, some of those young people, uh, you know, who have achieved things that you've, you know, you've seen them go through the, this expo. What comes to, to mind? Well, the most famous, I think, um, that most people know is Mark Shuttleworth. Yes. He was an ESCOM Expo uh, participant, not a winner, mm. but a participant. Um, and Siabulela Kuzo, who was um, a, a winner, he represented South Africa at Stockholm Science Fair and also at the International Science Fair in America. He won a Harvard scholarship and he is South Africa's first rocket scientist. Mm. Um, and he came from a small village in Umtata and he saw an aircraft flying past and he thought, well, What's yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. And he'll tell you the story that he blew up his mother's kitchen, I think three times. He was not very popular with her, but I think she's forgiven him since. So there's a lot of, of that people that become famous. But mm. I think there's a lot of other um, learners that, that become doctors, um, that become researchers. They don't necessarily become famous because they're not um, in the limelight necessarily, but mm. they do incredible work. And organizations like Eskom and Siemens um, recruit people from here and they are the future uh, uh, employees of those organizations, which is incredible. 
So talking about the impact that, that those young people grow up and eventually make in our country, um, when the expo happens every year, is there a theme that is associated with Because as I was walking around, I saw some like, they try and, a lot of the, the, the stuff is about everyday life mm. uh, issues, what's happening with water, uh, the drought, uh, you know, animal life in, in, in the farms, you know, health. I mean, just across from me here, there's a panic, your uh, safety life made. It has to do with heart rate monitors and things like that. Uh, are they briefed, uh, you know, what to work on, or does it just come naturally to them? The only brief we give to the learners is, is to look at your environment. So what are the problems in your community that need solving? And that's why you'll see, especially with the devastating drought in, 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 in the Western Cape, there's a big focus on that, obviously. So when we went through a period of, 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 of energy um, shortages, there was a huge focus on energy efficiency. So the learners... Um, look at what they can, what is happening in their community and what they can change and what needs changing. So you often see that that in the especially learners from the rural communities will look at at our, at our hot water system that is cost effective, mm. and that can be easily implemented. So that, the only brief is is just use your imagination and there is no box. So you don't even need to think out of the box because there anything is. goes.